Uh, welcome to uh, Module 7 on Real Estate Mortgages. My name is Professor Bill Duncan and I will be uh, doing this podcast on this subject. As you can see, the topics we will be dealing with cover a small part of the law of mortgages. They concern basically giving you an understanding of the nature of a mortgage, how mortgages are created uh, in Torrens system land under the Land Title Act, some discussion of the content of a mortgage, just a few uh, sec a few uh, clauses, and the rights of a mortgagor and ultimately the remedies of a mortgagee. This should give you some general idea of uh, the importance of mortgages. Mortgages are very common in the Torrent system. Uh, there are very few people who purchase land who don't at some stage uh, take out a mortgage to finance the purchase or uh, a mortgage to raise money for another purpose on the security of that land. It is therefore a very common transaction and one with which you should be familiar. I should also mention uh, that uh, there is some prescribed reading. Uh, chapter 16 of Wallace, Weir and McCrimmon uh, covers just about everything you have to know in good detail. If you wanted to do some further reading, there's a book uh, that I wrote with uh, Associate Professor Bill Dixon here on the law of real property mortgages. Uh, it's in the library and it may give you uh, a little more understanding of uh, some areas and concepts which you might find of some difficulty. But first of all, we are going to look at the nature of a mortgage. But just before doing that, could I draw your attention to the mortgage document that is in the uh, CMD database on the Blackboard site. This is a torrent system mortgage containing the appropriate form, that's form two required by the Land Title Act 1994 and in conformity with that act in order to get the document registered. It's the first part. The second part is the schedule, what's called a schedule, and that contains the terms and conditions of the mortgage. It may well repay you to have a look through that document to get some idea of what a standard mortgage looks like um, when uh, it's signed and registered. We may also refer to some of the clauses here, particularly in relation to the uh, payment of principal and interest and the exercise of power of sale. But I will draw these to your attention as required. All right, now let's look at the situation. What is a mortgage? Firstly, we have to look at terminology. Mortgagor is the person borrowing the money and the mortgagee is the person lending it. The mortgagor gives the mortgage to the mortgagee. So the mortgagor is the owner of the land, the mortgagee is the lender, and they take the charge. A mortgagee, of course, is a creditor, and they can take advantage of the personal covenants in any mortgage. And I've already referred to the covenants in the as the schedule to the mortgage document in the CMD. And of course, the mortgage is a contract, an ordinary contract between the mortgagee and the mortgagee to repay the loan, etc. And of course, the mortgage has a secondary function. It creates a security interest over the creditor's property, that is over the person that owns the land. The benefit of this is that 
the mortgagee has a secured debt. And of course, a secured debt takes priority over an unsecured debt upon the insolvency of the um, mortgage. Right, so we can say that a mortgage is a type of security and it is mainly uh, a charge on the land for the repayment of money, but it can be a charge for the performance of an obligation. Uh, although that is much rarer than a repayment of money. We are largely concerned in this course with the mortgage, uh, which uh, evidences a loan, which has to be repaid. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I want you to have a look at um, slide 1.3, and that is the terminology. The mortgage is the security, the mortgagor is the party who gives it and grants it, and the mortgagee is the party who accepts it and lends the money. And there will be reference in this uh, to old system land. The reason for that is that the terminology comes from old system land and it is overlaid on the torrent system of title. Well, how does this work? The difference between an unsecured debt and a debt secured by mortgage is set out in this slide. The under an unsecured debt, it's normally just a contract of loan. And if the debtor doesn't pay, you sue the debtor on the contract. You get a judgment and enforce it against any of the debtor's property. With a mortgage, it is similarly a contract of loan, which it evidences. You can sue the debtor on the contract of loan if you wish, but the creditor has the added advantage of being able to enforce repayment by the sale of the secured property. And of course, if the secured property doesn't cover the amount of the debt, the creditor can sue uh, as an ordinary uh, action on the contract for the shortfall. That is the essential difference. The creditor in a secured debt, of course, takes priority in payment over unsecured creditors who merely have ordinary contracts of loan. That is the principal benefit of taking a mortgage, having a secured debt. It is important to look at some old system concepts in order to understand what concepts under the old system transferred to mortgages under Torrance title land. And this is particularly the concepts of the equitable right to redeem and how a mortgage is foreclosed. Both these concepts arose out of general law land. And we'll briefly look at a comparison between the general law situation and the torrent situation. Right, under general law land, the mortgagee took a conveyance or transfer from the mortgagor, an absolute transfer, just like a sale. However, the difference was that the Mortgagor had a right to a reconveyance of the land back to their name once the payment was made in full under the mortgage. Under the Torrens system, the mortgage doesn't take effect as a full transfer from the mortgagee to the mortgagor. Sorry, from the mortgagor to the mortgagee, but it takes effect as a charge over the land and the land remains in the name of the mortgagor at all times. So under the old system, that's how the mortgage was created. The mortgagor's right 
if you look at this slide, two point one, the mortgagor's right to reconveyance is called the mortgagor's equity of redemption. And that, that is used as a common expression now to, de to describe under Torrent System land that amount of equity that the mortgagor, the owner of the land, has in the land after repayment of the mortgage. So, for example, if you have a block of land worth 500,000 and you have a mortgage over that land for 300,000, the mortgagor is said to have $200,000 equity in their land. But the concept came from this equity of redemption. That is the right to reconveyance to the mortgagor once the loan was repaid. It's known as the legal right to redeem once unconditionally once the loan is paid. You also have an equitable right to redeem, and that arose where the mortgagor failed to pay, repay the mortgage within the time agreed in the mortgage. That is beyond the last date for repayment. Technically at law, the mortgagee could refuse to reconvey and foreclose their interest. But in equity, right, equity looked at things in a much more flexible arrangements and gave the mortgagor a reasonable time beyond the repayment date uh, to tender the balance owing under the mortgage. So if, for example, a mortgagee insisted that if one didn't pay completely on the day, the last day there was to, to repay the loan, there would always be some time under the general law for a mortgagor to repay that loan. And that particular time was given by equity and called the equitable right to redeem that is beyond the time allowed. And as we'll look at later, the foreclosure of interest was really a situation where the mortgagee under the old system, which we're talking about, said, righto, you haven't repaid that loan on time. I am the legal owner of the land. I am now the legal owner of the land without your right to redeem. And from that time on, the mortgagee could deal with the land as an ordinary owner. So equity came to the rescue of uh, mortgagors who, for some reason or other, could not repay on exactly the date that was required. So if you look at the terms, the, the legal right to redeem is the right to require the uh, repayment on the date fixed by the mortgage. The equitable right to redeem is the repayment after the date has passed and to insist upon a repayment. And equity, of course, overrode the law. And the equity of redemption was that equitable right that the mortgagor had uh, to a reconveyance once the money owing under the mortgage was repaid. Now, the word foreclosure has been used before. Well, foreclosure is what I said. It is where the mortgagee who has under the old system the legal ownership of the land says after the mortgagor has failed to repay the loan on time, I have a legal right to keep that land as absolute owner and you lose your equitable right to redeem you, the mortgagor, to get it back into your name. Now, under the modern day uh, Torrens mortgage, the right of foreclosure still exists. And you'll see that in clause 81C of the mortgage on the CMD, that there is still a right of foreclosure uh, with the mortgagee. 
What has to happen now is that a mortgagee has to apply to a court for an order that the mortgagor lose their equitable right to redeem. But it only takes place in a certain limited number of circumstances, which are set out there in slide 2.3. By far the most common remedy of a mortgagee is the exercise of power of sale, which does not involve a court application and which we will talk about in greater detail later. So what is a torrent system mortgage? We've discussed the general concepts of importance, including uh, the right to redeem. Of course, under a torrent system mortgage, a modern mortgage, a mortgagor still has that equitable right to redeem. And depending upon the terms of the mortgage, you might be able to redeem only on a certain date, or as is normally the case, by a certain date, which means you can offer to redeem uh, at any time, uh, subject to the terms of that offer, which are usually contained in the mortgage. So we are going to look at the torrent system mortgage under these headings. That it's a charge, not a conveyance, the registration of a mortgage, the feasibility, which you've already looked at, the nature of that under a mortgage. We're going to look at the creation of equitable mortgages and their effect, and some reference is going to be made to the standard term document to which I've already referred. Okay. A, a charge is created by the execution of a Torrens system mortgage. Before registration, it's an equitable charge. After registration, it is a legal charge over the land, and the mortgagor retains ownership of it. As I've said before, the obligations and rights of each party is contained in the instrument of mortgage. And I've referred to that before, and there's a copy of a mortgage on the CMD. So the property is charged with the debt there's no absolute transfer of the land, uh, torrent system land, from the mortgagor to the mortgagee. And of course, this gives the mortgagee, in the case of a registered mortgage of property, the right to sell the property upon default in repayment and apply the process to the debt. Now, I want you to have a look at those definitions under the Land Title Act, Section 4 and 74. I want you to look at the requirements of registration, I won't talk about them, they're quite explicit in that slide, and what is required for an instrument mortgage to be written. Again, once registered, a mortgage becomes indefeasible, and of course it takes priority from the date of lodgement for registration, just as there would be with any other torrent system interest. There are certain requirements concerning the signing of a mortgage by the mortgagor or the owner and the identification of the mortgagor by the mortgagee. If this is not properly done, have a look at Section 11A of the Land Title Act together with Section 185.1A and following. If this is not done appropriately and the mortgagor uh, the mortgagee, rather, has not taken reasonable steps to ensure it's assigned properly. Even once it's registered, it's the title of the mortgagee will be defeasible. And the careless mortgagee is not entitled to compensation. This is quite important because this is the only interest where, where this type of problem might occur. Of course, if there's fraud uh, in the signing of a mortgage, it, it can be set aside. But uh, this is to do, this affects every mortgage, Section 11A, the identification of the person signing it to obviously uh, prevent fraud. Now, I mentioned earlier that once an equitable mortgage is signed, it is an informal charge over the land, and if it satisfies the statute of frauds, that is, it is in writing, 
and signed by the mortgagor or their lawfully authorised agent, it will create an equitable charge over the land before registration. Once it's registered, it becomes a, what's called a legal mortgage. And of course, it has the protection of the indefeasibility and the priorities associated with being first in time. You've already looked at um, indefeasibility and priorities. We just apply it to this circumstance. An equitable mortgage may be created by a deposit of title deed uh, with the intention of creating a charge, a deposit of title deed with the mortgagee. 